get any criticism within your party for appreciating that budget not once have i had my leader mr namle cornering me on this our party with a difference including the congress the grand old party they do not have any plan to talk about standards reason but kachadev has been a thorn in the fishermen's issue for so many years what stopped the then government from going to the supreme court the 1974 parliamentary records as we go through it mr vajpai did not make any statement no we don't no, have any transparency over what is happening in arunachal pradesh today if you take the example of a petrol and diesel the dmk in their election manifesto say we are going to reduce it the anti hindi agitation that happened as uh, a useless old uh, slip it's not just the language it's very demeaning it had its relevance then does it have its relevance now major reason being cited for the new education policy not being accepted and the people of tamil nadu have voted for that my caste is something that is burning with them Hello and welcome to today's Space Off. We have with us a very, very special guest, the one and only counsellor of Greater Chennai Corporation and that too, the one and only female counsellor of Greater Chennai Corporation from the Bharatiya Chanata Party, none other than Ms. Uma Anandan herself. Vanakkam and welcome to Chanakya Ma'am. Namaskar. How are you doing today? Good. 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 The election seasons are up. And your party yeah. is uh, on fire in Tamil Nadu. <laughs> Great. Uh, first thing first, man. Um, is BJP having a little sense of um, fear over the upcoming elections that it has brought a history back from over 50 years? Suddenly, the Kachatheev issue. Why now? See, one thing I understand. We are in politics. We are a political party and all political parties are in the political arena to capture power, to come to the seat of power. The reason could be different for each party. They could have their own agenda. But honestly, I can say nationalism, Desh Bhakti is what we are all taught in BJP. We are a party with a difference and I can proudly, you know, shout from rooftops about it. So, as I told you, Tamil Nadu scenario, all of us know how it is, right? We're not here, you know, trying to play, I am good, I am a saint. I think all of us should get rid of that attitude, right? Especially DMK, I think, has no blank at all. DMK and its allies, all of them, including the Congress, the Grand Old Party, they do not have any plan to talk about standards, reason, why, why now, all that. I think no, the people, we, people so. wants to know, right? Leave, leave the political parties. The people are uh, equally, um, you know, anxious to know. Why BJP has brought in the Kachitevi issue now? Like, you know, you, you have been in Tamil Nadu politics and Tamil Nadu BJP has been a great, uh, I mean, though not a <clears throat> significantly on the election front, but the presence of BJP has been for quite some time. And why suddenly now? That's what I will see. This suddenly you may think now, but Kachitevi has been a thorn in the fishermen's issue for so many years. Actually, more than us, the DMK has only been raising this issue so often, every time DMK and its allies have been talking about Kachati. And first thing is the partners in crime, both the Congress and the DMK, have been raising this issue, shedding crocodile tears for the plight of the Tamil Nadu fishermen, right? They know the truth, they know what transpired, still trying to put the blame on BJP. Kachati, we have been repeatedly telling, and our former Prime Minister, Mr. Vajpai has even raised this in the earlier days, in his earlier, in his hem days, 
to say that Kachatir issue should be taken forward, right? So now perhaps God sent gift, perhaps I don't know, but perhaps God has decided that we should get some ammunition on our hands to make these people realize that they have been talking only lies. It, uh, the entire opposition has been shedding crocodile tears when they have been the ones to ruin the lives of fishermen of Tamil Nadu. But whatever has come out so far, do you think it is really making an impact for BJP in Tamil Nadu? The reason being, whatever uh, documents that uh, Honorable uh, External Affairs Minister Mr. Mr. Jay Shankar was talking in a press meet recently and Mr. your party president Mr. Anamalai has uh, sought and he's got after an RTI, they all speak and it's actually in a way validating uh, what DMK has been saying because as per your document as well, in 1974, DMK was notified that Kachati was going to be given. But the fishermen rights, which is a very important part of it, the fishing rights, that will remain with the fishermen of Tamil Nadu. That's what, even if Kalingar Karnanadi has agreed, that's what he agreed. In 76, when the fishing rights was given away, it was during emergency. And even your own document doesn't say that it is with his concern. How do you see Okay, this? I agree with what you tell, what you told, right? We know the acumen of <clears throat> the late Chief Minister of Mr. Karnani. And I would like to ask, I would like to ask all these people a question. Why was the DMK silent on this issue that he was a, the chief minister was a privy to the party, to the decision taken? Right? They should, they could have easily told throw the document on the table and say, this is what happened and this happened during emergency. Did they ever open their mouth on that? And they, have, like to say, they have done a resolution in Tamil Nadu Assembly. In Tamil Nadu no. Assembly, they have, uh, they have, uh, they have uh, created a motion and they have passed a resolution in Tamil Nadu Assembly to uh, get Kachitiva out immediately after the 1974. Uh, That's what I'm telling. What steps did they take? Moving the resolution is different. Different. What stopped? Now, for the, at the drop of the hand, they're going to... Now, they have not got uh, from the central funds. For this, against the governor, at the drop of the hand, they're going to Supreme Court. What stopped the then government from going to the Supreme Court? Why Ms. our uh, leader, Mr. Vajpayee, and the late Chief Minister of Tamil Nadu, Mr. Mr. Jayalata, spoke about this? What stopped these people from going to the court when they can do this now at the drop of the hat? And let me tell you one thing. We all know at that time, the Sarkaria Commission was at the helm, right? We all know that. And we all know what a statesman Mr. Karunanidhi is. We all know that. Well, they have never come out open. There, there has never been an honest confirmation of what transpired between Mrs. Gandhi, Mr. Karunanidhi, the External Affairs Minister, Mr. Swaran Singh then, and the officials. Has there been a transparent uh, dictum what has come out now that should have come out earlier in those days and uh, now I would like to ask you people why is the uh, DMK then they have been in alliance with the Congress for how many years now two UPA one UPA two what steps did they take why the Congress has also been crying horse from every nook and corner about this when they have committed the time it's nothing new if we have to turn back the pages of history Let's talk about the Kashmir issue. All the Himalayan blunders that the late Mr. Jawaharlal Nehru committed and who suffered the consequences. Bharat as a nation suffered the consequences of his stand. And what was his comment about Kachatila? What was that his it's comment? A, that it's an unmanned island, a small piece of land. No, no, that is all okay. It is of no consequence. It is no of consequence. no importance. Ah, that is the most primary sentence that he has uttered. And repeatedly we have faced the, the thankfully, I think God was kind enough, kind enough to have Mr. Sardar Pallabai Patel with us for quite some time to get rid of all these problems. Kashmir, he said he would handle Mr. Jawaharlal Nehru. And we know how it uh, transferred. And now they talk about the geopolitics, China and all that. We know what happened no, to the but, China by my but, but BJP has been talking about all the blunders of the Congress government, starting from Mr. Jawaharlal Nehru, since the time BJP came to power. Not just now, even when Mr. Um, Honorable ex-Prime Minister, Mr. Vajpayee was in power, BJP has been continuously talking. But the talk about Kachatiba, especially when you mentioned uh, Mr. Vajpayee, 
1974 parliamentary records as we go through it mr vajpai did not make any statement of course the discussion was made after the kachatiyu was given still mr vajpai said i'm just reading it from the papers and he didn't make any comments there probably one, the... one thing as i told you how much transparency was there as to what conspired between mrs gandhi the external affairs minister the officials then and mr karunanidhi actually as per reports i can tell you only one or two uh, top ministers were aware why their own dfk mr sedira sedian very vocal and enable no mr sedian's mr sedian's um, uh, arguments in the parliament are very clear he has made a categorical it's still in the parliament website and you can we can refer to it so he has made a statement categorically that before giving kachati with the matter was not discussed with the chief minister that's what mr sedian has recorded in the parliament has it been has it been confirmed Mr. Sedian himself has been in the dark about certain things. No, you brought about Mr. Sedian. I'm just no, making Sedian a point of what Mr. Sedian told. <laughs> no, Mr. Sedian has told that this is a wrong move. It is. I yes. I just read it somewhere. And DM, and, and, and 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 he has also told it's a wrong move. He has also told that DMK is vehemently against it, and this is against the interest of the people of Tamil Nadu, especially yes. the fishermen that, community. Yes, that that statement I'm telling. Yes. This should not be. So even Mr. Sedian has been kept in the dark from the way. looks record so who all were in the aware of this that is the biggest question mark and no but as we have only now as you told you why are we reading up now because we have got certain records and then you have the chief minister who studying how could he how could mr annamalai get the because he doesn't understand rti is a weapon for that to get to the bottom of this see one more thing let me tell you they compare uh, the same uh, the club you know the partners in crime they are telling even yesterday i had one gentleman when the topic is kachchi tv they talk about arunachal pradesh and all this going you know not at all in the tangents why i would like to say the fishermen who have been uh, you know sort of undergoing all these ordeals continuously for the last 20 odd years uh, even more than that they keep telling what have you done in the last 10 years you people make all the blunders in the last 40 years and you want us to come and rectify it in 10 years I was... last... no let me one more thing i would like to say what have you done there i would like to show the statistics of what have the number of fishermen right from uh, the, the coastal tamil nadu who have been captured by the sri lankans earlier sri lankan government that you know that statistics which goes and what is happening in the recent times there is a remarkable decrease and i think we can proudly say that this is achievement in the last 10 years 100% even own. even after 2014 no fisherman was shot i think that's very what? rare one one or that two shows, I, i believe one i guess it? yeah that shows no that's that's definitely there i mean the so diplomacy part so partners in crime have no authority or no standing to talk about this issue no the same transparency that you're talking about right when it comes to arunachal pradesh you think you you compare that this is not relevant to what is happen, what happened in kachativ but today opposition is climbing and a lot of other you know media and lot of people are climbing that arunachal pradesh lot of part of arunachal pradesh has been taken by china and the central government has been continuously telling this is false information and nothing of that sort has come up so who gives the transparency no i'm just telling you how how the governmental angle works right so here no, no, we don't see, have any transparency no we don't no, have any transparency of what is happening in arunachal pradesh today how do you no, no. with all that first let us start it is all stuff. the blunders of the no, congress no. I'll, i'll complete my question i'll complete my question how how would you expect in 1974 that should be a very great transparency like we are still you know debating about what is happening in arunachal pradesh the opposition is telling we don't have any transparency there see the opposition whatever the opposition says i am telling you that they have no moral authority they are only peddling lies every time we have seen it repeatedly again if we take a simple matter of this thing it's of the gst they keep on telling the central government has not done, done enough blunder during the if you take the example of a petrol and diesel the dmk in their election manifesto say we are going to reduce it right and earlier the governments were telling the bjp ruled government the local bjp government were prepared to reduce the price the state share while the tamil nadu did not now all of a sudden during election in their manifesto they are talking about reduction so this is just an example of politicizing everything and how honest they are for at first let them answer this 
The first, this thing they said in their manifesto was they will close the Tasman shops. And second, I would like to uh, say of, this that is not part of the 20, need. That is not part of 2021 uh, manifesto. They said Tasman. they were no, no. you had Kanimori. That's what, no, that is that is what Kanimori madam was telling everywhere. No, that is ah. not part of 2021 manifesto. That's part of 2016 or 20 ah. um, earlier. The yeah, manifesto, whatever it is, uh, then the manifesto, are they going to quote the period and all that when it comes to the uh, welfare of the people? Whether it's 2016 or 2021 or whatever. So now what have they fulfilled? Their 2016 manifesto, while her father was there, he said he's going to give land to the landless. Have they done that? My so last question my is... Stand is no, please let me finish this and conclude. I would like to say that the Dravidian government and the Congress government their main thing has been a foundation of deceit. They have never been honest in anything. It's only now, okay, they're, you know, making money, dynastic rule. That, that has been their only thing. Come whatever. Whatever was their stand when they, are up, when they are in opposition. It takes the entire, the stretch to the other end when they come to power. Why last question in that our manifesto, last manifesto of the BJP during a parliament, we were fulfilled. Can uh, the, the, any of the, the any other political party talk about it? They are only trying to push freebies and uh, how much of corruption? Why drugs in Tamil Nadu? Is anybody coming out in the open and talking about it? The drug punnetra kalgam? Are they trying to talk about this issue? My last question on the Kachatheva issue. Okay. Uh, how do you think the people of Tamil Nadu are going to react to BJP and stand with BJP in this particular issue? Because if something has to be done today, the ruling government is BJP. And you, I'm sure you're hopeful that you're going to come to power again. So com considering that, how do you think the people of Tamil Nadu, how much do you think the people of Tamil Nadu are going to trust? That's one part. How much do you think this particular issue is carrying a weightage among the Tamil Nadu voters? See, definitely it is. Otherwise, you would not have the chief minister going on a pu public rally, losing his school and using unparliamentary terms. He knows that they are they have been caught red-handed. That is how I would like to call. And you have the, the Anna DMK person, uh, leader, keeping quiet. Why we have the videos of Madam Jayalalita as the chief minister of Tamil Nadu then in the assembly. Openly quoting about it. And why was the Chief Minister Karuna Nidhi, as she rightly says, he should have come to the assembly and refuted her stand. No, he never came to the assembly. Instead, he, he has given a statement outside the assembly. So I think this shows the true colors. And Kachatibu, whether it is going to be a political, I'm not prepared. Our, we are, our only concern is the damage that has been done by the previous Grand Old Party and the DMK in coalition. We would like to rectify and make life peaceful, without any problems for the local fishermen of Tamil Nadu. Thank you for that, ma'am. Coming to the elections, um, I'm going to pick up another topic which is very, very close to Tamil Nadu. Um, I, I would say uh, your Tamil Nadu state BJP president has opened a can of worms by uttering this statement about uh, the anti-Hindi agitation that happened. He has referred to uh, that protest or, you know, uh, using the anti-Hindi uh, sentiments in Tamil Nadu as uh, a useless old uh, slipper or something. So do you think, uh, you know, it's, it's wise to make that statement very close to election, playing with the sentiments of the people of Tamil Nadu? See, first thing, understand, we have to speak the language that they understand. And they are no saints. If I have to speak, if you are going to point out at the language used or the words used, I can take a leaf out of our history, the words that has been used by the DNK leaders, even in the flow, Anantanayagi, we cannot forget the words used by the DNK Chief Minister Karuna Nidhi, who is no more. And same way, how much he, what he spoke about, Indira Gandhi Madam and uh, when she came. Well, when you started, you said BJP is a party with the difference. Yes. Uh, like, let me tell you, we have not stood down to that level. No, that's what I'm telling. We have our uh, code and we are within that code. And definitely what you see, the, the Hindi is, is 
but this is no, about... i don't know i don't think there is anything unparliamentary don't we say throw no, it's not system. unparliamentary i'm not telling what he said uh, is unparliamentary I'm not, I'm not, but it's de no it's language, demeaning no? no no it's it's not just the language it's very demeaning the entire sentiment of tamil nadu people around that anti hindi pro, uh, protest you know very well that you know that was a time where congress tried to really impose hindi you know bring okay. hindi as a right? uh, so it was relevant then right it is it is no more a relevant of relevance now that is what he has meant it is served its purpose and it had its relevance then does it have its relevance now it doesn't so we only talk about what is relevant today then i can even take back and speak about so many things why if you are going to talk about the sentiments and all that this party along with the congress congress did they take think about the sentiments of the hindus when they came out to the court and said ram setu is an imaginary ram is an imaginary character did they ever think about the sentiments of the hindus the freebies that they are doing out to the other religions are they thinking about it? and we have a chief minister here who doesn't even who goes wishes for vishu kerala he has the thing to wish but he does not of course we don't need his wishes for diwali or this thing we are quite happy even if he keep for it doesn't we don't care but when you are talking about the sentiments ten fingers i can point out at them if you raise this point Uh, the hindu sentiments you have so many of the leaders r rasa who was a sitting mp who is again contesting so and you are going all to, of a you are going to play the dravidian so you are going to play the dravidian politics in tamil nadu i am telling that when you have raised this question before that please check the credentials of the other party and then come to us and then we, no, we are no match for them in that we are no, no match at all we can never come up to that level no That the part. the reason it's being raised to you especially the bharati janata party is that the bjp has been claiming as you know when when we started i know anybody you talk to uh, i talk to from bjp they start with this phrase that we are a party with a difference so what is the difference that you're showing if you're hurting the people if you can't see the difference party? if you can't see the difference even after all this i really don't know what will make you see the difference and one more thing let me tell you being in the election scenario and all that i can proudly claim from even the himalayan hill top to say that we are parting the difference because the way we are received by the public in so you really think there is no anti hindi uh, sentiments in tamil nadu no never no it is not it is everybody wants to read hindi come up in life or they told and saying no so why why are the people of tamil nadu then voting for dmk who say no to the new education policy that's what i'm see they're not really as half of them i told no, you no in in new education policy even hindi is not mandatory it's just another language another indian language so see the sentiments of people the tamil nadu has always been a state which is very stubborn on the two language policy now if the third the, and that's the only reason major reason being cited for the new education policy not being accepted and the people of tamil nadu have voted for that and you still think that there is no anti hindi sentiment or anti any other language like sentiment you, you mean to say that there are public of tamil nadu are going through all this and i think we are a, i told you that the scenario in tamil nadu is totally different the freebies ma'am if bjp no if bjp is telling that people voted for us because we said article 370 would be abrogated uh, ramar temple would be built when when something when people voted for your manifesto you you claim that the people have responded to you and the same happens if the people of tamil nadu respond to the dmk see, manifesto see never see i only said the duplicity of the manifesto i said for the dmk i did not say we, they voted for us for the manifesto then the, the voting pattern and all that we didn't speak at all we were only talking about the duplicity in the manifesto of the dmk no the duplicity in the manifesto is different ma'am but the point is the new education policy is not the people i am talking about the sentiment of the people of tamil nadu and you strongly believe my question is do you strongly believe that the anti hindu senti- i mean anti hindi sentiment is very low or it's it's uh, i mean uh, it's completely not there in tamil nadu at this point no no it is not that it is not completely there the intensity of that of what it was 20 years back is not there now the intensity has come down now people understand that they have to if they go if that is the language if they cross gumadi pundi or uh, kanchipuram or bangalore they need that they know that they need both english and that language 
but people like seeman are you know continuously growing in their vote share in tamil nadu see when you have had a precedence of the dravida munetra kalagam which has come through because of their filmy background the uh, you know the fiery speech which uh, does not hold uh, which you know which is not truth you know the emotional this thing that they have he is trying to follow in that footsteps now and the people are responding and the people yeah. are responding that's what that's i'm thinking because we have a history but what is the percentage if you speak that how do you say the vote share is there right he is growing you how how did he fare in the local body elections then he should have come for a majority in the local body elections how much no, did local, he win no local body elections are never a sample in size right no, so compared to that. no that compared to 2014 what is, what is the what is the no no compared to 20 no ma'am compared to compared to 2016 20 2014 2016 his vote share has doubled you cannot that's deny that that's Just on paper his vote share has doubled or something like that you can't say he's uh, you know he's becoming a force to reckon with and first mind you if you're going to tell this i would like to ask you a very very relevant question even to this see to stand in an election it costs money right why this gentleman for the last three or four elections taking the parliament the assembly the local body elections all that he has stood in all the seats right yes where is he getting his money from people oh <laughs> oh very nice it's a leather, i suppose uh, like the communists you know who go around with the undiel perhaps uh, your uh, i should also take and they like no uh, no no honestly i'm telling you like you know if we get into that topic i i might be i'm i'm actually getting no, a no, little yeah, this, interested this to bring you about the election electoral bonds issue because you know i don't want to get into that topic no no i would like to know this misconception that uh, seeman is no that's what that is what mr seeman has been claiming and so far uh, wait wait uh, let me complete so far neither the ed nor the um, uh, income tax department none of them has framed him for any kind of money laundering or any act so there is no proof that you know he where, to to challenge him as to where you where you're getting his money and uh, fr- from what i've learned right when you donate something to uh, the ntk party they give you a receipt after collecting including your pan number other details and everything madam so it's very you transparent i am sorry i don't know where you're getting the information from all this because we have the likes of so many people who were very successful in their other this thing but they had to wound up they had to wind up the political party like uh, so many no, that that may it. happen that may happen to even ah, mr then. seeman tomorrow that's different okay but what i'm trying to tell is so far his ideology has been successful and it's growing in tamil nadu where he is only you know basically talking about tamil so i just brought into uh, brought mr seeman into the conversation for the anti hindi sentiments of people so, so there are so many contradictions in the speeches no one day he attacks lord muruga the next day he says he is my kolutata he is my all this yeah. so many contradictions so you can fool the people of tamil nadu very easily all the anyway the we have had our predecessors telling the, uh, showing that and now you can see that is the bottom line so you think the people of tamil nadu can be fooled easily and you want to try your like it's so obvious no it's so obvious no so Because is bjp also trying its luck then so you say mr karunanidhi earlier no is bjp also trying its luck to fool the people of tamil nadu then have we given any false promises or has there been any contradictions in our this thing you point out one when was kachati why was kachati even not why was kachati even not part of bjp manifesto in the prior elections see we have got certain as i told you it's god's wish that we have got certain information now we have got that that is why we are using it No, you no, said Mr. Vajpayee spoke about this earlier, but see, no, you said no, no, Mr. Vajpayee spoke about this please earlier, come, but you didn't include it in your manifesto. I would like okay. to say, if you say that we have taken it now, would we have kept quiet in the early elections with the, with this sort of ammunition in our hand? You tell me, would we have kept quiet? No, you have never spoken about Kachchi TV in the mean, prior elections. So would we, with so much of ammunition in our hands, we have got this now? We are using it. Uh, it is very clear through RTA we have got it. So if we had got it earlier, and if we had kept kept hush on this, would have we would have been a foolish party, isn't it? We should have we would have used it then and there. We have got it now, and we are using it. All right. 
I'll move on to the elections in uh, Tamil Nadu, ma'am. Your constituency, um, I mean, from where you are, you got elected as a councillor, the South Chennai constituency uh, is having a star candidate from your party and the opposition or uh, the DMK candidate is no less. So it's a, she's a very, very popular candidate as well. How do you see the prospects of Dr. Tamarise Saundar Rajan against uh, Madam Tamarachi Tangapandian from DMK? See, from my personal thing, as I told you, we are a force to reckon with. We are I, I, I missed to mention another star candidate. All three players are star candidates. So, uh, Dr. Yeah, yeah. The, the ADMK, from ADMK, Dr. Jayavardhan. The, the, yes. Dr. Jay, we Jay have also been a former. And yes. So, yes. you know, the when I when we go, the reception given by the people to say, uh, because my ward also comes under this, a large section yes. of my, this thing. My ward is a small part of the bigger South Chennai this thing. And the reception that they get, the same yardstick that they will, uh, the change, change is inevitable, change is what we want. That is the mentality of the public now. So that is why you have jitters in the opposite camp now, trying to level all the, you know, there this thing to say that uh, the BJP is no force to reckon with, they are a zero. Why are you wasting your time talking about us then? Talking about our leader Anamale. If we are a zero, we are not a force to reckon with. Why are you speaking at every drop of the hat? Why are you mentioning our leader Anamale? No, Why are you South Chennai, do you think Sir South Chennai Sorry. is turning? Do you think South Chennai can be turned favorable to Dr. Tamarisai Sandarajan? It is. It looks very favorable from the field, I'm telling, because I'm on the field. Mm -hmm. It does. And the reception that public give, so happy. And make us, well, let me tell you the hospitality. They want us to sit there. Actually, to tell you frankly, uh, some of my cadres with whom I have gone around, they tell me, Madam, you please don't come back. When they see you, they want you to sit with them in their house. Spend, you know, where we can finish five houses, we do only one house when you are there. They are so happy to see you. They make, you know, they are so hospital. It's so hot now. So they want you to drink a cup of buttermilk. They want you to drink a cup of light juice. Every second, every house want me to want the entire cadres who are coming with us. They want us to drink something. The hospitality is so heartwarming. What what more proof can I have? I had the same reaction with during my election campaign. There. The people, Tamil Nadu is right, is very much for the change, expecting the change. And uh, that is why you see the, you know, the affection that is being showered on our leader, Mr. Anamale. It is obvious. And if you don't want to see it, God can only say And it. No, undoubtedly, he's a very charismatic leader. I won't debate on that with you. So how do you see no, his... not problem? for you. I'm telling in general, you know, for the people, uh, for the opposition. No, everybody leaders, sees. Everybody sees. That BJP is not a force to reckon with. We are a zero. We are a, uh, you know, like that. It is to satisfy their own. Uh, no, no. You know, I mean, undoubtedly, no. in today's Tamil Nadu politics, you can, if you cannot take out one name, that's Mr. Anamalai's name. So that's without any doubt. So no, no questions there. But it's just that about you know, in uh, what phase or what side he is, you know, the controversial side or the charismatic side. You know, it, it that keeps wobbling here and there. So how do you see his prospect? The combination of this only makes him. The most mm -hmm. lovable leader in, Chen, uh, in Tamil Nadu. The controversies I and the charisma. His fame and name is across the seas of uh, because we are in so many, you know, the uh, NRI groups and all that. So many of them who keep asking me, they think that just because I'm a ward councillor, I'm in touch with Mr. Anamari every day. They keep <laughs> telling me when you meet, uh, when you speak to him today, when you speak to him tomorrow, as if I'm going to speak to him every day. That, uh, you know, his name that has uh, gone up and you have the whole entire India talking about him. You have the top English channels doing a session with him, waiting for a session with him. And my, you, you can just compare the questions that are uh, heard out at him and how the others, that the Dravidian leaders are being mollycoddled by the same uh, press, by the media. My last question, it's about you, ma'am. Uh, single, uh, the one and only, and that too, uh, a women councillor in the Greater Chennai Corporation. How do you? Do, how did you feel sitting in that uh, building, just with you know completely the entire room is filled with people of uh, you know opposite ideologies. You are definitely the odd man out. How was your experience? See, 
See, so one far. thing, as you say, uh, it is still, uh, you know, whenever I get the opportunity, I would definitely like to speak to the Chief Minister, Mr. Stalin, about this when I get the opportunity. First is, as you say, the odd man out there. Uh, but I, ha I know of certain parties, the members, who, for whom my caste is something that is burning with them. The only thing that strikes those people is my caste. And they would like to prick it every time, thinking that I'm going to fall down. I don't care about it. Right? I was born into this caste. And uh, 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 let me say, every caste has its own uh, you know, sense of pride. So I carry that along. But at the same time, I would like to appreciate the way the top DMK leaders in the same corporation who extend so much of respect, warmth, love, affection, regard for me. They, I have so many of them. And uh, on a personal level, I enjoy a good rapport with them. And uh, to tell you frankly, in my ward, whatever the demands and the, of the public boom, what works I want and all that, when I put out a demand for what I need for my ward, it is not being rejected just because I belong to the BGP. I so many of my requests, eight out of ten demands and the, you know the request that I make for my ward is being complied with. So that makes me comfortable there. And as I told you, they make me feel comfortable. The same uh, people. So DMK is making you feel feel comfortable and allo uh, allocating stuff that you are asking for your ward. But the same hospitality is not being reciprocated due to DMK by the central government is what they are keep telling. So how do you see that contrast? Or do you think they are doing politics here? Uh, DMK is doing politics. See, I would like to say, uh, see, they cannot... Uh, let me tell you one example. You should know to appreciate the positives in your opponent. DMK mm -hmm. should start learning their own saying, their own leader saying that the jasmine from your uh, opponent's garden also has its own fragrance. You have to admit that. And this is the premise on which the Dravida Munetra Karagam and its allies should start building their political narrative. To tell you frankly, I would like to say the budget session, the recent corporation budget. When I came out, I spoke about the positive and the, you know, the doubts. I, I saw your tweet appreciating the budget and Ms. Yes, Priya, her only tweet. part of it. I, you know, they were telling that the BJP councillor appreciated the budget. They did not you mention... Also, you also mentioned some flaws. The yeah. anomalies in the figures. There are a lot of anomalies. I raised about this point also. But they did not mention except for the Hindu. For a change, the Hindu did a very, very... Honest reporting, I would say, on this. And when I came out, when they interviewed me, I told them, uh, Madam, you have appreciated the budget, they said. I said, yes, it's a good budget. There are so many good things in that. Do you want me? Why? They expected me. I asked the press. I said, just because I'm in the opposition party, you want me to walk out, tear the budget, throw it on their face and say it's good for nothing and walk out? Why should we do that? Uh, let me up, let, uh, let us know to appreciate the good things that is being done. The same we want from the opposition. Ma'am, did you they get any criticism within your party? Ma'am, sorry See? to interrupt you, but did you get any criticism within your party for appreciating that budget? No, definitely not. That mm -hmm. is why, uh, to tell you frankly, I think the credit goes to my party leaders and especially Mr. to Mr. Annamalai. Not once. See, time and again, I have repeatedly told in my interviews the cooperation I get from the DM, ruling DMK government and some of the, like the health minister, Mr. Ma Supramanyam or Mr. K. Nehru, I have appreciated about that, and the MLA, local MLA, and my zone chairman and my zone other councillors. Then I have repeatedly expressed my appreciation for that. Not once have I had my leader, Mr. Annamalai, cornering me on this, not once. And to tell you frankly, you must imagine at such a young age, his level of maturity, his magnanimity, when he told me 
Akka, just because you're elected, right? You don't need to be, you know, sort of constricted by the party. Uma Anandan can remain the same Uma Anandan. Mm. I think uh, you must appreciate that. Uh, that is why when I repeatedly, uh, without any calms, I'm able to say that. Appreciate that. The same, that's what I said. See, they ask questions in the parliament to the uh, uh, finance minister, Mrs. Nirmala Sitaraman, or anybody else. But they don't even wait to hear the her answer. They run away from the scene. Why? Why are they running away from it? I am not running out of the corporation session. There are so many moment, times when we, we had a rub off there, when I have stood my ground and said, this is what I will do. I will not budge it. And I, have agreed. I said, you must acknowledge the, uh, the role of the central government in their grants to the corporation. Please be transparent about it, the contribution of the central government. You can't put a sticker on the central government schemes. Mm -hmm. We are 100% I'm hopeful that uh, Mr. Narendra Modi is coming back to power the third time. Right? There is no doubt about that at all. And Tamil Nadu is going to be one of the biggest surprises that is going to spin out on July 4th. Let's so you're confident. So you're confident that you're going to win a uh, lot of seats here, not just the. We are going here. to win for the same people who are having stomach burning uh, moments. They are going to see what is being played out, the result of corruption, the result of nepotism, the result of dynastic rule. All that is definitely going to. And uh, definitely, I would like to even add the word misrule and arrogance. People will definitely teach a lesson for this. It's a great pleasure talking to you. Thank you, Master. Thank you.